Hello everybody and welcome to this. It's the second video in the series on Jekyll and Hyde. Everything I go through comes from Mr. Bruff's Guide to Jekyll and Hyde, available for £3.99 at mrbruff.com or amazon.co.uk as an instant download. In the last video we looked at the author, today I want to look at the novel. Now, Robert Louis Stevenson was the next big thing of the Victorian literary scene. He had success in front of him. He had become very famous and he made a lot of money following the success of Treasure Island and all he had to do was to write the great literary landmark that everybody expected of him rather than further exploit his considerable talent, talents for money. Unfortunately for his friends and other contemporary writers the next book was Jekyll and Hyde and the book was dismissed as what is known as a shilling shocker the idea that it's a cheap, quickly produced story, very low quality, consumed by the masses just for entertainment. Although Stevenson didn't initially think much of his story, he was actually much more excited about the release of his book Prince Otto, A Romance, which was published shortly after he finished the first draft of Jekyll and Hyde. He wasn't prepared to pass up the opportunity to make money, but ironically the novel that made Stevenson's friends think he'd given up real literature has ended up being one of his enduring successes. The novel itself was published in 1886. According to Stevenson, it came to him in a dream whilst he was very ill and possibly close to death. He was confined to bed, he'd been given medications, one of the side effects of which was hallucinations, and he was just basically trying to ease the pain that he was enduring. During the night, his wife awoke to find him in the middle of a night terror, and as she woke him up, he said to have scolded her as he was dreaming the story of Jekyll and Hyde. And according to Stevenson, he dreamt two scenes from the story, the one of Dr. Jekyll taking the powders that initiates the change into Hyde, and the scene close to the beginning where Hyde tramples the young girl. Now we saw in the previous video the idea that Stevenson constantly thought about man's duality, that there's more than one side to each person, and here was a novel that discussed the idea in great detail. Stevenson himself said of the book that he had long been trying to, find, to write a story on the subject to find a body, a vehicle for that strong sense of man's double being, but he certainly found that vehicle in Jekyll and Hyde. It's interesting to think about how this book has become so, so famous to the point where most people haven't read it, but most people know what we mean by uh, the, the word Jekyll and Hyde. Now, some of the key ideas in the novel, the nature of dreams revealing truths, of the subconscious, of the power, and the idea of drugs or powders releasing something within men, are all played out in Stevenson's own life. As we know from the previous video, he believed strongly in the subconscious as revealing to him parts of his true self. He even said once that he couldn't take all the credit for his story as most of it came from his subconscious mind. And this idea of people having a dual nature or combining two personalities is played out over and over again in the novel, but also in Stevenson's own life. This novel, which made him a superstar in Britain and America, and made him lots and lots of money, also cost him his reputation at the time as a serious writer. As we've seen in the previous video, Stevenson lived a sort of double life, and his experiences of religion through Cummy and his parents, and a Victorian society, made him somewhat critical of the hypocrisy and hidden side to people of the time. We also had a look in the last video at Victorian's repressive attitude to sex and sexuality. It's interesting to note that many of the film or TV versions of Jekyll and Hyde tend to depict Hyde as a sex-crazed monster, that women are unsafe around him, that his primary evil is lust and sexual desire. Now this is interesting on a number of levels. Firstly, this isn't at all apparent in the novel, or at least on a surface level. It is suggested that after writing the first draft, his wife told him it would never be published due to decency laws and that he'd missed the opportunity to write an allegory, an extended metaphor about human behaviour. 
and the subsequent redrafting, which removed many more obvious references to the previous sexual experiences of the characters involved, led to a much more subtle story where many things are hinted at but not exactly said. In this case, is Stevenson saying to our dark side, or saying that our dark sides, our Mr. Hydes, are primarily concerned with our sexuality and that repressing or covering them up so much is actually doing us harm? There is the suggestion that the novel is dealing with the idea of fighting our real desires or appetites in order to fit into Victorian society. The picture is of a London, or of course we could say an Edinburgh, in the 1800s, full of men who, to the outside world, look respectable and trustworthy, but underneath are fighting against their own terrible desires. And this would have been incredibly shocking at the time it was published, but it does link somehow to other things that were emerging in the world of psychoanalysis at the time, and we'll talk about that in another video. The novel also comments on the taking of drugs, or as Jekyll does in the novel The Taking of Powders, which release some sort of internal demon that isn't constrained by the rules that society has created. In Jekyll and Hyde, Hyde is physically deformed or somehow terrible to look at, and this would link quite well to the Victorian notion that deformity or disfigurement somehow meant that a person was evil, that their inner deformity was visible on the outside. Victorians were terrified by the idea that they wouldn't know a person's true intent or character. The police at the time even compiled thousands and thousands of photographs of criminals and lower class people in the hope that studying them would reveal what a criminal or evil person looked like. And the message to emerge from Jekyll and Hyde, that anyone can have a secret self buried deep within until released, would have been very unsettling. This novel then captures very well the idea of man being more than just one person or personality. It's a tale that still resonates today as we constantly battle with comp competing forces within us. The novel that both made Stevenson a star and a fortune and destroyed his reputation among friends and writers of the time as a proper writer is much more personal than many people at the time and since think. The double life that Stevenson himself led in Edinburgh the influence of stories and characters from his childhood showing the two sides to people and the often subtle but nonetheless significant allusions to sex and sexuality all point to a story that is much more of Robert Louis Stevenson than he, his wife or even his friends would care to admit. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please do subscribe to the channel.